So we just added the ability to control sizes previously. But now we're starting to accumulate a, a longer list of global variables to keep track of. Every time I click a point, I have to add the positions to G points and the color of the current clicked point and the size of the current of the, of the current clicked point. And later in this class, we're going to have more things. We're going to have UV coordinates and texture coordinates uh, and potentially um, normals and textures and other kinds of things. And we're going to get a growing list. And we wish we could organize this in a slightly better way. So rather than having a separate variable to store the list of different components, what we'd like to do is have some kind of class or object that keeps track of all the information needed to draw a single point. And then we just have a list of all of these objects. This would somehow be a cleaner way to organize our code. So here it is. We previously had a set of variables and I've now created a new point class. I'll come back to that in a minute. And I'm keeping a list of shapes. And for in this list, I'm just going to keep a list of points. Now let's take a look at this class. So JavaScript allows classes. We just declare a class and we have a new type point. And I've set up a constructor here and I've set the type to point and I've set the initial position to 0, 0, the initial color to white, and the initial size to 5. So where are we going to use this list? We need to replace all the places we were using this before with our new list. So let's go take a look at where were these places where we were doing this. So inside of click, we previously were storing information to each of our three different lists. So now this has been replaced, so I've commented those out, and now this has been replaced with we're going to create a new point and we're going to store it. So we make a new point here using new point. We set the point to be the position. We set the color to be the color. We set the size to be the selected. This is exactly mirrors what we had before. And we push this entire point onto the shape list. So we now have this list of points. In addition to putting these things into this new list, we need to go use our new variable inside render. So here's our render function. We used to be getting the length from the G points list, and we had no guarantee that the G points list was the same length, actually, as our colors or size list. So now we have a single shapes list. We get our length from that. And rather than setting our positions, colors, and sizes from each of these lists, we're going to grab the exact same variables, but we're just going to get them from the shapes list, which points to a point, and then grab the subfields and stick them into our variables. And everything should work, continue to work the same way. So let's make sure that it's indeed working the same way. We can still click our points, we can change the colors, we can change the sizes. Everything is, is indeed working the same way. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is clean up the complexity of our render all shapes function, which has to know about rendering points. And it's possible that later when we get around to rendering triangles, it's not going to be exactly the same thing that we're going to have to do here. Um, so indeed, the way we're going to pass the information is slightly different. So what we'd like to do is make our point know how to render itself. So this is a classic example of an object-oriented kind of thing. We're going to have a list. Right now it has points in it. Later it's going to have triangles and circles in it. And we wish the points know how to render themselves, the triangles know how to render themselves, the circles know how to render themselves. So we need to take this code here, which knows what to do with our shapes list, and we're rendering everything here. We're going to change this to be just to go over the length of the shapes list. And for each item, we wish that all of this stuff below was basically turned into G, G shapes list dot render. And each object knew how to render itself. And the rest of this stuff didn't have to be here. So let's take a look how we can do that. We're going to copy all of this stuff here. We're going to move it up. And we're going to try to stick these things inside of a render function for our class. So here it is. We've taken the render stuff and we've moved it up inside of a function inside of our class point. Right. So here's our class point. We had a constructor function and now we have a render function. So the only change that we've had to make here is that previously in these commented out lines, we were referencing the G shapes list in I position in our loop in order to get the information. But now instead of that, we're going to, because we're already in the object, we're going to use this so that we get the values that are stored in this object. We stick it here. We're going to make all the same calls to render. And the everything works exactly the same way as it was before. Now, we still have um, something that's not clean here. I really don't like defining this class uh, right in the middle of our 
code, which is our main code doing things. Usually when you have classes, they're stored in another file. So we're going to do, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to take this class and I'm going to move it over into another file. Okay, so I've removed the point class from our colored points file and I've made a new file points.js and I've just put that class over here. And why have I done this? Just to organize our code. I like to put each class in its, in its own file. So it's exactly the same code that was there before. And how do we make this file to load? In our HTML file, we have a set of scripts that we're loading. So after we load up our utility functions and before we load up our main, I've just added to define this class here. So it's like header files in C, which is define all of our classes and whatever we're doing in our HTML file. Now, our function works exactly the same way as it did before. We've just organized. The only other thing that I've had to do here is I was previously using overrides and editing directly on um, the home page. Let me, let me switch tabs here. So here's the one I was using before. So this is from the source code and I was using overrides and editing directly into the overrides. So I've taken my code, copied it out, made local versions of these files. And so now here you can see I'm in my local file system and I've loaded up this page and I'm going to turn overrides back on and keep editing inside the browser. But sorry, this was not the right one. It's this one. And editing inside the browser so that I can conveniently show you the way that I have been um, doing this all on one page, but these are now stored in my local file system so that I was able to create an extra file here. And you could choose to edit using the overrides the way that I am now um, while you're doing your debugging, or you could choose to edit in a separate uh, text editor and then just keep reloading the page. Either way is fine.